plasma firing Star Wars blasters have always been considered science fiction. Today, I want to see if we can change that. This is a real life plasma firing Star Wars blaster. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, Star Wars blasters fire a plasma bolt, like a bullet made of pure plasma that's held together by a magnetic field. Which is some serious sci-fi malarkey. It's more than malarkey. Hang on though, plasma's actually real. When my stupid brain heard the word plasma, a few things came to mind, like plasma lighter, plasma globes. It's too light in here. Ooh, ah. Plasma cutter, plasma TV, what the heck is plasma? Your of course, plasma is known as the fourth state of matter after solid, liquid, and gas. What is this accent? It is a state of matter in which the ionized substance becomes highly electrically conductive to the point that long-range electric and magnetic fields dominate its behavior. Okay, fine. I was reading that off Wikipedia. Basically, plasma is a state of matter in which the ions and electrons get so excited they break free and float around all crazy-like. I should probably go to the whiteboard. Picture, if you will, an atom. In an atom, you have your nucleus with your neutrons and your protons. Then, of course, you have the electrons orbiting it. Just a quick refresher, neutrons are neutrally charged, protons are positively charged, and electrons are negatively charged, as denoted by the plus and minus signs I've so helpfully drawn on the board for you. You're welcome. Plasma occurs when an atom is pummeled with so much energy that it actually rips Rip. electrons out of orbit. The electrons breaking free totally screws up the balance between the negatively charged electrons and the positively charged protons. These two should be in balance and cancel each other out. As you can see in this example, there are two protons and one electron, which means the atom becomes positively charged because there's, you know, more protons. A charged atom, FYI, is known as an ion. Which reminds me of like ion blasters. Ion torpedoes away. But we're gonna not think about that right now. So you end up with an energetic jumbled mess of these free electrons and these charged ions just floating around. That is a plasma. Because of these charged ions, plasmas are often referred to as ionized gases. Lightning is a classic example of plasma. You have this super high current of electricity that literally rips apart the atoms in the air and you get this giant bolt of superheated plasma. So technically, actually, if you could figure out how to like get lightning to shoot out of a gun, that technically would be a plasma blaster, which people have done with giant Tesla coils. I think there's a video Smarter Every Day did with someone who built one of these, like handheld. The problem is there's no way to really control the, the arcs of electricity. It's not even close to a Star Wars blaster. See, in my mind, to be accurate to a Star Wars blaster, it can't just launch a lightning bolt. It has to actually fire a concentrated blob or bullet of plasma. So giant electric arcs are out. What else is plasma? Fire is a plasma, is what I thought until I started doing research for this video. Apparently, that is a super debated topic by armchair physicists. Fire is actually insanely complicated and doesn't fall into any of the four states of matter. However, Flames do contain ions, and I can prove it. This is a really cool experiment I saw in an old, old Veritasium video involving a candle and a source of high voltage electricity. I'm gonna be using my Mandalorian flamethrower gauntlet, which uses a taser. The idea behind this experiment is to prove that a flame does contain plasma by proving the presence of ions or, you know, charged atoms. Basically, I've moved the two wires so far apart that when I push the button to turn on the arc, it can't build up enough electricity to jump the gap. However, if I put a flame between those two terminals and then turn it on, we see that the flame actually conducts electricity, which is really fascinating. Definitely can't conduct through just the air, but put the flame in the center and we will actually get it to arc. So what exactly does this prove? The electric arc 
is uh, a plasma. We're pumping so much electricity through the air that it actually ionizes the air. As you know, the electrons go flying and you create an arc of plasma between the two points. If we pull those points too far apart, we don't have enough power in the system to ionize that much air, so we don't get a plasma arc. However, if we put it around the candle, we do get an arc, which means there must be ionized air in this candle flame or else we wouldn't get that arc. And if our definition of plasma is an amount of ionized gas, then technically this flame must contain some amount of plasma. The question that's debated is kind of like, how many ions do you have to have before you can actually consider it a, a plasma? But screw that, technically there is some plasma in it. So behold my real life plasma blaster. Fire is plasma, change my mind. If only there was some sort of gun-like object that fired a concentrated fire projectile. Oh wait, there is. Behold, the flare gun. It's basically like a weird shotgun shell that contains a, well, you know, something that burns. I'll just show you. That's louder than I thought it was gonna be. I'm so gonna be deaf when I'm old, but I don't know, it seems kind of lazy, and the hacksmith already did it. You know, basically you just spray paint this black and 3D print something to go on the front. It's also only single shot, so you have to like reload it every time. I think we can do better. What would be absolutely epic is if I could get a real gun that, you know, is semi-automatic, so I can have a whole magazine of bullets, and then figure out a way to set the bullets on fire. If there was only some way you could set a bullet on fire. But wait, allow me to introduce the tracer round. Tracer rounds are basically bullets where the back of the bullet has some sort of really flammable, very brightly burning compound. It looks exactly like a Star Wars blaster bolt. It's like insane how good it looks. I managed to find me some 22 caliber tracer rounds, which we're gonna use, and you know what, why don't we uh, kind of take this thing apart and see what it actually does. So if we get a pair of pliers and carefully ease, whoa, it looks kind of just like a regular bullet, except these are red tracers. It's got a bit of red paint on the front, but you'll notice the back looks a little bit interesting. It's kind of hard to tell on camera. It definitely has some sort of compound. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we light it up. Holy Goodness, that is bright. So now we have real plasma bullets that look and function just like the ones from the movies. Now we just need a blaster that can fire tracer rounds. Fortunately, Star Wars has always based their weapons on real life firearms. For instance, Han Solo's DL-44 is a modified Mauser C690, C96. The classic Stormtrooper blaster is a World War II submachine gun. Cassian Andor's blaster that he uses in Rogue One is a modified AR-15 pistol. Literally, an AR-15, but you chop off the barrel, and the stock. As much as I would love to get my hands on a real authentic Mauser, uh, they're very expensive. So instead, I'm thinking I kind of want to make it a hybrid of Cassian's and Han Solo's blaster. It's gonna be an AR-15 pistol. You would think the obvious lazy choice would be to take this AR-15 and literally just chop it down, which is true, that would be easiest. However, I would go to jail because gun laws are retarded. Turns out it's actually illegal to cut a rifle down into a pistol. Why? Who knows? To keep from going to jail, I have to either buy it or build it starting as a pistol. But that's not the real problem. The real challenge is this thing called the buffer tube, which is this section on an AR-15 that the stock goes on. See, the way an AR-15 is designed to operate, okay, not gonna lie, this is actually an airsoft gun, so I can't actually demonstrate with this, so here's a handy dandy animation I stole from someone else on YouTube. The way an AR-15 is designed to operate, when the gun fires, the bolt carrier group actually cycles backward and slides into the buffer tube, making room for the next round to be chambered, and so on. To replicate the Star Wars blaster, we can't have a buffer tube there because then it doesn't look like the, the Star Wars pistol. But if we chop it off, the gun will cease to function. So yeah, problem. Fortunately, I am a GigaChad genius and I have access to Google. It so happens that if you convert the gun from its normal caliber of 5.56 to 22 caliber, a 22 bullet is so small that the bolt carrier group is self-contained so we can completely delete the buffer tube. To my FBI agent watching this, I milled this lower receiver out of an 80% parts kit. It started as a pistol. It is now a pistol. It will always be a pistol. This is perfectly legal. Don't arrest me. I got an aluminum stripped upper. Um, aluminum because I thought that would kind of look more star Warsy, you know, the bare metal look. And we'll get some nice 
pixelated gun reassembly. I'm pixelating the footage because some part of my brain is in denial about this video staying monetized. It's blank. So this is where we're at. We have a very short barrel. This is four inches long because pistols have short barrels. <laughs> <laughs> we need a muzzle device of some kind. I ended up finding this website that actually sells parts for making Star Wars blasters. I bought their muzzle device. As you can see, this looks exactly like the muzzle device on Han Solo's blaster. And we've reached my favorite part, these epic wooden handle scales. I particularly love the look of the wood grips on Han Solo's DL-44, but AR-15s don't use wood grips, and some of the ones I've seen, they just look stupid. And then I found the coolest thing, an adapter grip that allows you to use 1911 handle scales on an AR-15. And then to make it better, I went on eBay and I found somebody's custom hardwood 1911 scale. I mean, get a look at this thing. It's even got somebody's initial on it, which in my opinion, that kind of helps add to the character. Fun fact, the scopes on most replica blaster pistols don't actually work at all because rifle scopes are designed to be used on a rifle where you literally stick your face right in front of the scope. They're only designed to be about like three inches away from your eye. Guess what you see when you're looking through a rifle scope mounted on a pistol this far away from your face? Nothing. I want my scope to actually work, so back to Google it is. It turns out they make something called a long eye relief scope, which is designed for pistols made to be used a distance away from your eyeball. So my scope is actually 100,000% fully functional. And it's canted to the side, just like the one in the movie. <laughs> Look at it. It's a freaking Star Wars blaster. And it's gonna shoot real plasma bullets. Only one thing left to do, and that is a little bit of weathering. I want this to look like it exists in the Star Wars universe. I want it to look old and roughed up and dirty. The secret ingredient is sandpaper. So I started sanding away. All the edges, the spots that would naturally get wear over years of use, the scope, magwell, the knurling, everything. Just rubbing away the black baked on paint to reveal the bare metal underneath. I'm using some dark brown spray paint, rubbing it on, then rubbing most of it off. It's meant to look like dirt stuck into the little oh nooks God. and crannies, you know. Not too much, less is more here. You can see I actually ended up spilling coffee on the upper like a long time ago. So that already looks a bit weathered there. Hard part about weathering is you don't want to do too much. In this case, because it's all metal, it's pretty easy to take it off. If you were dealing with plastic, like if you're trying to weather a Nerf gun or something, it's a lot harder, you have to be more careful, because you know, if you try to take that off, you'll take the whole paint job off. Whereas in my case, I can just sand some more. Ladies and gentlemen, time for the test. I'm running out of red tracers. I've got a few left and we'll have to switch to green. As you can see, I've got a bunch of targets set up. So does stuff that goes boom. I'm gonna go for the, uh, the blue bottle on the left there. See if I can hit it. Sometimes these tracers don't light, some of them are duds, and because they're 22 caliber and the bullet is so small, it's kind of dim. Like with larger calibers, the tracers are a lot brighter, so you can see them better even in broad daylight. And I kind of need a way for it to get kind of dark for them to show up really well. But when it's dark enough, they look really, really cool. Oh, that one was good. That was real bright that time. Shaving cream on the right. Oh, it's epic. So the green tracers don't look quite as cool as the red ones. They tend to kind of just look white. Again, just because a 22 bullet is just so stinking small. I think uh, whatever they put in it to make it glow green, just like there isn't enough of it on the bullet. And 
And now for the grand finale. I got some green tracers and we're fixing to make a fireball. Oh yeah. <laughs> 